Today we have Pastor Howard Bass um, and what you might not know, and by the way, welcome. Thank it's you for being here. It's great to be with you, Jen. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you awesome for being be here. here. Years ago, I had a wonderful friend that I went to college with who attended your church, and almost every week she would bring me a CD of your sermon, and I would play them all the time. And at that time, you know, we were pastoring full time, and so your CDs actually fed me and my husband that? during the week. And so isn't it a, I know, isn't God so cool? Yeah, it really so, is. The, the journey, how God orchestrates things. Yeah. Thank wow. you for serving in the body for over 26 years. Thank you for being faithful to this community. Thank you for being in the trenches and just for loving God's people. It's a big deal. Yeah, it is. And thank you for that. Yeah. But you know, it is, uh, it's a labor of love. It's a calling. Yeah. You know, if God calls you to it, then he'll resource you through it. Yes. And, you know, another thing just recently you did that so touched me is we did a, a call a few months ago now, um, and we we prayed over uh, Tampa mm -hmm. Bay. We prayed over the Bay of the Holy Spirit that, that we would be protected. And I only had like a six-hour notice from Rabbi Kurt Landry, and he said, only have people on the call that have authority in Tampa. And I sat there and said, Lord, you've got to, you've got to give me like 10 names. And I reached out, you were one of them, and you showed up with just a few hours notice, and you prayed, and you stood, and thank you for that too. Well, it was a privilege to be on that call. It was a very powerful time. And uh, just to know that there are a remnant yeah. of leaders who understand authority that have it and will stand in that authority, yeah. uh, even in a contradiction of sorts. Yeah. So it was a privilege to be part of that. It really was. Well, thank you for responding quickly and, um, and just for being a kingdom, a kingdom leader. I, I, I crave the day that those in the pulpit realize that the kingdom takes precedent over the local church. That is so true. And you know, it's a unique thing, if you don't mind, when you mentioned about kingdom is, it seems like over the last several years with all the craziness, we'll just call it craziness, yes, yes. Uh, the shifts that have happened, is it seems like there is a, a remnant of kingdom-minded people. People have a revelation, an understanding of kingdom, and, and it transcends churches yeah. and culture and ideology, so to speak. People are coming out of their theological boxes to embrace kingdom. Yes. And ultimately, that's, that's the assignment Jesus gave us, to take the gospel of the kingdom. So it's exciting to see that there is a generation, uh, a, a remnant that I think God's been developing and preparing, and that remnant is now emerging in the earth with a kingdom mandate. Yes. And they're more concerned with what the Father wants, yeah. what Jesus wants with his kingdom, instead of us trying to build our own. And that's a shift that we need to see happen. So. It's essential. Yeah. We, we have to, if this country is going to get a grace pass and we're going to continue to be a force to be contended with, we've got to, the body here, the ecclesia has got to embrace kingdom. So important. So keep, keep blazing that trail and, and, and call, in, call in leaders to, to do just that. It's necessary. So this is a special week. This is um, Christmas week. And uh, so many, you know, there, there's a plethora of topics we could have discussed today because uh, you've been on this journey for a long time. And uh, if I pulled topics out of a hat, I'm sure you could, you know, you could just run with any of them. But we really want to, today to focus on hope because I think that people are watching that feel hurt, suicidal, broken. They've lost hope. You know, when we say joy to the world, they're like, there's no joy in my world. And you've really uh, gone into the life of David and you've kind of dissected it and gotten this up close and personal look at David and how he processed hope. Because many times we know him as a man after God's own heart, but he wasn't always that. Mm -hmm. He went through some very hopeless situations. So to kind of share that revelation and how God's been taking you through that and how we can help others hear about that. So. For me, this journey of David and uh, the sense of hope, and I'll qualify what, what I believe God is saying hope really is, uh, because hope has to have 
its roots in something. Yeah. And that something is truth, not opinion, not fact, Important. but truth. <laughs> and especially in the era we live in and the current culture, everybody has their own truth. But what is the truth? Yes. So, so real legitimate hope has to be anchored out of truth. So for me, this journey started really strange uh, when the pandemic hit. Okay. Of course, I'm sure everybody's got, every leader has pandemic testimonies yeah. or revelations, as it were. So nevertheless, we were going through that, uh, I guess maybe May of 2020, yeah. shortly after it happened. Thankfully, we live in a state where we opened back up. Oof. We were back in our building after two weeks and some people returned, some people didn't, but we're praying our way through that. And the Lord just began to start talking to my heart and gave me a, the Lord just said, this is a prophetic model mm. for where you are, meaning the body of Christ in the time and season we're in. And I'm going to show you what I want to do. And he took me to 1 Samuel 30 with David at Ziklag, the meltdown at Ziklag. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. Everything stolen. Everything gone. And th if you read through that, the and you, you just let your imagination mm. soak in the Holy Spirit, let him open some things up. You see there that that was a chaotic, desperate, despairing, hopeless as it gets yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. It, 600 men have lost everything and there is no evidence. All they see are burning embers. Yeah. All they smell are the losses of what was yeah. and no evidence that they have any hope. And then they turn on him and start, they're ready to kill him. Yeah. And, and so in that, in that pivotal moment, David discovers something. And here's the cool thing. Here's what the Lord began to show me. He said, David found something he wasn't looking for because something found him. Yeah. And that was hope. And so when I began to look at what the Hebrew actually says, it didn't say David went and encouraged himself in the Lord. It said David discovered a power and strength. Mm. that the narrative clearly describes that he had just emptied himself emotionally. He's emotionally spent to the point where his tear ducts are dry. He mm. can't even cry anymore. So, so now he's got a scenario where his leaders are talking about killing him. Yeah. So his support system. So Lord begins to unpack all these things. And if you look at what's happened, a lot of churches, ministry, people, families, businesses, you, you see a lot of the support systems, the yeah. structures we relied on pre-pandemic, those were, were gone. Gone. And, and so it really exposed where our gut level of faith was. Yeah. And But the Lord began to talk to me and say, I, I'm going to show you and I want to show my people that this is not the end. What seems to be yeah. is not the truth of the way it's going to be. I want to get you to a hopeful place yeah. where you find hope because I give it to you. And so very much like when God takes Adam out of the earth, yeah. pulls him up and breathes the breath of life in him, in the Hebrew, in 1 Samuel 30, it indicates that what God does for David in that moment, David doesn't know what to do and he doesn't have time to pray. God meets him mm. and breathes the DNA of who God is. See, God is hope. Mm. Paul said, the God of hope. Yes, That's part of who he is. So the Lord in that instant takes his DNA and this is where I believe is so powerful for each of us as believers, that the Lord is saying, I have a hope that is of me, that I'm going to restore to my people. And then I'm going to put some pursuits, some chases, some dreams back in you, because this is not over. The future may look different, yeah. but it didn't catch me off guard. Right. So, so in a real sense, that then became a model for me. The Lord anchored me in that yeah. and then began to have me talk to our people and encourage people and preach and teach and declare, listen, your contradiction is confirmation mm. that the hope that's in you, in spite of every reason you should have to not have hope after what you've been through, because so many have suffered losses and the Lord's saying it's recoverable. Yeah. yeah. But I realize, and this is what the beautiful thing about the Lord is when we get to a place where we don't know what to do yeah. and we have emptied ourselves. Yeah of our own resources, emotionally, intellectually, <laughs> yes. physically, financially. I mean, you, you, you just go yeah. down the list and the Lord does for David there what I believe he's saying, I just looking for somebody yes. to embrace the contradiction yeah. that there is a prophetic, tangible hope that I'm going to put in you, that you can see a future that you can't see around you right now. Yeah. 